Welcome to my channel, Vibrant Soul Crafts, where we express our creative imagination. Hello everyone, I am Vibrant Expressions and welcome to my channel, Vibrant Soul Crafts. I'm so thankful for you guys tuning in to this tutorial as we do wrap up this series of October Bargain Bee Box, <laughs> Night in the Woods. Alright, so this tutorial that we'll be getting into momentarily is the Statement Necklace, the beautiful Statement Necklace from October's edition of Bargain Bee Box. If you watched the previous tutorials and the revealing of this month's Bark and Bee Box, you will see that we also made a statement bangle bracelet as well as hoop earrings. So before we get into this tutorial, I like to give a breakdown of the bags that we'll be using. We are using bag number two, which are the which is the textured chain right here. Bag number three is the feather links. These beautiful pieces. Bag number five is the red tiger eye here. Bag number six four millimeter garnet round beads, which are these four millimeter reddish, deep reddish brownish beads. Bag number seven, which are the crystal faceted lantern beads, which are these beads right here. And we'll, we will have a closer up of the beads as we get into the tutorial. Bag number nine are the leaf spacer beads. Bag number 10 is the detailed owl charms. Bag number 13, which would be the round owl pendant. Bag number 14 is the crystal faceted twist beads light topaz luster. Here. Bag number 15 is the eight millimeter faceted carnelian round beads. Bag number 16, which is the six millimeter English cut carnelian round beads. Okay. The items that we'll be using that's not included in this month's bead box is toggle clasps, which by the way, um, did come in previous um beatbox uh at the moment i can't recall which beatbox as well as these eye pins okay we'll also be using four millimeter jump rings and we'll be using ball needles and this um in this necklace, I actually used head needles, but I'm going to use the ball needles. And we are using one uh, rhinestone spacer bead. All right, guys, let's head on to the tutorial. All right, y'all, I'm back and I'm ready to get into this tutorial. Okay, so... This necklace consists of two pieces of uh, chain that we're using. The top uh, strand, which is the longest strand. Okay, and we're gonna measure it in a few moments. And then we have the bottom strand, which is um, the shorter strand. So now this top strand is a measurement around my neck. 
okay and giving about maybe five links extra okay on each side but again like i said we'll measure it but that's just according to my neck all right so what i'm going to do is also really quickly i do have some jump rings okay that i um left on the chain as a marker of the elements that will be reassembling okay so also i am using this handy dandy <laughs> tape measure so i'm gonna go ahead and measure this chain the top strand which measures approximately 14 inches long. And that's, um, that's just a rough estimate as to um, where I'm going to put the jump rings and toggle clasp on. So now what I'm going to do is, so I have about 14 inches of chain. So I am going to measure or divide 14 by seven to locate the middle of the chain. Um, so I'm gonna divide 14 um, by two to get the middle, which is seven inches. So seven inches, or and we're dealing with approximates because these, um, these links can shift around a bit or whatever. So here I am. This would be approximately seven inches right in the middle of these two jump rings. Let me zoom in a bit so you can see the jump rings more clearly. I have a jump ring here and here. Okay, so... The, this pendant, this owl pendant, will fit between these two jump rings. Now, these two jump rings are going to have the small owls on it. So it's going to be the large owl pendant right here in the middle. And then with the smaller owls on these two jump rings. Okay, so now that we've located the center of the chain, we are going to use our markers and work our way down toward the ends of the chain. So now, this will be the center of the chain we uh, measured, which would be seven inches from, the, from each end of the chain, okay? So, this will be the center pendant. Okay. So now I'm going to go about two lengths. And the measurement don't have to be exact again. I don't want to put too much emphasis on exact um, measurement. But we're going to go maybe two lengths apart from the center chain. So... This hole or this link will be the center. Then we're going to measure let me see, one, two, three, about, oh, okay, about four links to the right and about four links to the left of the, of the center link. That's where I have my jump rings located to hook on the owl pendants. Okay, I'm going to put that to the side. So now I'm going to grab my tape measurement and measure from the jump ring, which will be, uh, which will hold the small owl pendant. I'm going to measure, let's see. to this jump ring right here. 
and that would be four inches approximately four um, no excuse me three and a quarter inches so if I measure three and a quarter inches down toward the end of the chain from this jump ring I will end up here and this is going to, to be the connecting link for the bottom strand okay and the same thing from this jump ring here measures three and a quarter inches which will be again the connecting link for the bottom strand and then this is what we'll end up with this is how it would look let me go ahead and just put this here <laughs> Just to give them clearer vi visual if needed. There. So this is somewhat how it will look. Okay. As it all come together. So now. I'm going to measure. Let's see. From this jump ring, I'm going to measure from the jump ring to maybe about five links from the tip. Okay, because I always leave, I don't put my toggle clasp at the very, very, very tip. I always leave like a couple of links just in case, you know, if I later on decide I want the necklace to hang down a little longer, I always leave an extension. Well, I usually, I'm not going to say always, but I usually, but this time I am going to leave a small um, extension of about maybe five links. So it will be approximately here. So I'm going to... Okay, so it would be three inches. So three inches from this connecting jump ring, the um, jump the jump ring that will connect the top strand to the bottom, the top layer to the bottom layer, okay? I'm measuring three inches from that to the end of the chain. And that's where my jump ring will go. So I'm going to do that now. Okay, so while I get my jump rings, I'm also going to show you the tools that I'll be using, which are the curved nose plier, straight nose plier, later on in the tutorial, round nose plier, some cutters, Oh, a disclaimer on the cutters, and thank you to my viewers and commenters. Awesome feedback, guys. I, you know, I do have um, uh, viewers and uh, subscribers who comment on the cutters uh, when I'm using memory wire. Just let me say that real quick. I don't want to forget, which they are absolutely correct. It is better to use... Um, memory wire cutters for memory wire because it will dull the um regular wire cutters okay and even with this um chain cutting chain i will also recommend memory wire cutter uh cutters for that as well so but i am going to use this um until my memory wire cutters come in okay and I think that's all with the tools. So let me go ahead and grab, I'm um, using curved nose and straight nose pliers to connect my jump ring. So I grab the jump ring, which is already open. And to open it, you just twist apart like that. Okay, so now I'm going to go to the three inch mark, which will be approximately right here. And I'm just going to insert 
the jump ring. inside the hole like that and then I'm going to use one end of my toggle clasp and I'm going to hook it on to the jump ring and then I'm just going to close the jump ring and then there we have one end of our um chain finished with the toggle clasp and then we're going to do the same exact on the other side all right, so I went on ahead, guys, and did the same exact finish on the other end. I measured from this jump ring, three and a quarter inch, to the end of the chain, leaving, again, a couple of links um, to hang. All right, and that's where, at three and a quarter inch, I added the jump ring and... The other part of the clasp the toggle clasp all right so that completes the finished the uh, finished toggle clasp endings okay so I just went on ahead and moved um, put the bottom strand aside until we are done with the top strand so right here this is the center strand okay effect that we are going to use this eye needle to build, okay? And then connect right here in between the two jump rings, okay? At the center point of the top chain. So the tools that I'll be using is the round nose plier uh, for now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to loosen this top loop. Hold on a second, guys. I'm going to try to make the light a little brighter. <laughs> All right. I think that's a bit better. <laughs> okay. I'm also going to zoom in a little bit, too. And so I'm going to write that down. Okay. All right. So this is the center point of the necklace of the chain. Okay. All right. So now we're going to grab and loosen this eye needle. By lifting it slightly, not all the way. And I'm just going to hook this part in between these two jump rings, which will be right here. And now I'm going to use my flat plier, my flat nose plier to close this hoop to the eye needle. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is strand on the first tiger eye. The rhinestone spacer and then a second tiger eye. Now I'm going to grab my round nose plier to form a loop, an eye, mm -hmm. but I'm not going to close the eye all the way just yet because I am going to connect the pendant on. It's about halfway for now. I'm going to connect this pendant well, let me close it a little bit more so go on a pendant Oh. 
and some not much space <laughs> for me to close this pendant. Maybe I should have used the other end. Let's see. And if you use a longer eye needle, that would be even better. <laughs> okay, for the sake of this video and tutorial, what I'm going to do is just close off this hoop all the way. Okay, give it a nice secure closing like this. And then I'm just going to grab a jump ring. That's all. Okay. Grab a jump ring. Hook the pendant onto the jump ring. And then connect the jump ring onto the eye of this strand and then i'm going to take my other tool and just close off this jump ring and again if you have a longer eye needle about i'm gonna measure this eye needle right here it's strange how it worked for the first um for the first uh, necklace. <laughs> okay. All right. Just to give you an idea of what I'm talking about. This is about, let's see. Yeah, this is an inch. Two inch needle will be perfect. All right, so now we're gonna move on to these jump rings out, just outside of the center strand. Okay, so I'm gonna grab my two pliers to connect the owl pendants. So I'm going to grab one of the jump rings that's on the outside of the center strand. And I'm going to open up this jump ring using my two tools. <laughs> and then I'm just going to hook on the owl pendant and do the same exact thing to the other side. I'm going to close off this uh, jump ring. Guys, this is the last day of October. Oh my goodness. Like this month really um, went by. Like even like since uh, September, the whole month of September went by quickly. October as we are now ushering the month of November. My birthday is in September, guys. So I just recently celebrated my birthday and already we are in uh, November or just about. Okay, so I closed off this jump. So, this is what we have. <laughs> okay. So the top strand is just about complete, y'all. So all that's left um, with the top strand to do is just connect the bottom strand, the bottom chain. But we cannot do that until the bottom chain is done. So this is the bottom strand, okay, that I am going to disassemble momentarily. But for now, I'm going to just show you how it looks. All right. So we are going to prepare each um, bead. Okay. And strand. And then we have the four feather links. 
and then we have four bottom strands to prepare. And now I'm going to duplicate a strand from this group, one strand from this group, this group, this group, and this group. Once I have all the strands completed, it will be group of five, group of five, group of five, and group of four. So I'm going to grab a ball pin. And by the way, these ball pins are two inches, yes, two inches long. So I'm grabbing a ball pin and I am going to right now build this strand. Gonna grab a leaf. Let me move this over. <laughs> A six millimeter faceted carnelian. No, excuse me. Before I do that, I'm going to grab the lantern bead. And then a six millimeter carnelian. Okay, so that's my fifth strand. I'm going to move on to this. Um, what is it? Half mat bead. <laughs> and I'm going to do another strand of the leaf pendant. Oh, excuse me. Uh, where's my leaf? Oh, I have my group of five already. <laughs> so it's five here, five here. Um, I have my five um half faceted half matte beads so now i'm going to work on the fourth strand of the bottom strands starting off with the garnet eight millimeter faceted carnelian the twisted uh light top um topaz and that completes the group of four. So now what I'm going to do is demonstrate how I connect the bottom strands to each feather um, pendant. Just going to insert the needle and then just wrap it around, create you know, I don't want it too tight. I do want it to dangle a little. So I am going to make um, a loop and just wrap the excess wire around. And then I'm going to grab my wire cutter and trim the wire. And this is how we have our link. Okay, I'm going to do it again. leave a little dangling space before I start wrapping the wire. Grab the wire cutter and trim. Okay. This necklace is so fun to make, guys. <laughs> it really is. And it's to me, it's simple. It's, you know, it's not. It's just um, quite a few components, yes. But it's fun. <laughs> All right. And then we have our feather 
um, pendants or links. Okay. So we're going to go back to the chain. So I'm going to grab my tape measurement. And again, I'm not looking for total perfection or exact measurements. To me, it takes the fun and creativity out of it when I find myself being too technical. Okay, so we did measure before, um, let's say approximately, I think I said 10 and three quarters, right? But we're going to do that. Okay. So I'm going to begin measuring at the second link of each end to get a more accurate um, center. So I'm going to round this off to about 10, um, 10 and a half inches. And that will give me five and a quarter center. So about right there, I'm going to grab a ball pen just so that I don't lose my space. I'll use it as a marker. Okay, now I'm going to grab the mat bead. Okay, or the half mat bead. And I'm going to connect it to the center. And I'm going to remove the marker. And now I'm just going to, and I'm gonna, you know, not be too rough because I don't want the chain to pop. <laughs> I'm going to wrap around in the same exact way that I did the um, the feather pendants. So after I enter the pin into the link, the center link, I'm just going to begin wrapping in the same way that I did with the feather links. About two three times is good and then I'm going to trim the excess wire so now we have our middle link and from there we will start to build the second um the second chain so now every bead between um this set of five this set of five and this set of five will be will skip one link okay so there will be a link skipped between each bead so from this point on i'm going to well at this point i'm going to focus on just connecting the feather links so i'm going to grab my jump ring open it And also, I want to, as I'm adding on each um, bead or link or strand, I want to make sure that the chain is in a uniform position. Like, I don't, I'm not going to do it with the chain twisted. Okay, so I see the link that this bead is on. So I'm going to skip a link and go into the following link. And I'm adding on the jump ring. By the way, 
everything that I connect or hang on, whether it's the jump ring or wrapping the the, the pin or strand, is going to hang from the bottom of each link, not the top. Okay, so I have my jump ring on. Now I'm going to grab the link and connect on the link to the jump ring and close the jump ring. And this is what we have. Okay. So now I'm going to skip. I'm going to prepare another jump ring. And skip. Another link. So I'm going to have two feather links on this side and two feather links on the other side. So two to the, to the left of this bead and two to the right. This is what we have so far. And there is a slight correction that I do want to make. From this center bead, I am skipping one link between this feather link and the center bead. So I'm skipping one chain link. Let me see if I can give you a close up because these links are quite tiny. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna do my best to give a close up. So I am skipping. So right now we're focusing on this center bead and the first feather link. So in between this center bead and this feather link, I only skipped one chain link okay one chain link now between these two feather links okay i skipped three complete links so there are three links in between this feather link there are three chain links between this feather link and this feather link and the same exact pattern on this side so now what we are going to do is connect these groups okay and this should be fairly quick because i'm only skipping one link <laughs> okay so right after this feather link i'm oh what happened to my light Okay, <laughs> I am only skipping one chain link. Okay, so I see right here. There's the link. Okay, so I'm entering this needle into the link and I'm doing the same thing. Nothing new, I'm just gonna wrap around wrap the excess wire and also um, I'm gonna tuck in the wires that I clipped so that it doesn't scratch but I'm going to do that last <laughs> I, I'm just focused on getting these uh, strands on. So I'm going to repeat the same process, guys. Okay, so when I come back, I'm going to have this group and this group done on each side, skipping only one link. Okay, guys, so I have assembled uh, this these two groups and the feather links. All that's left to assemble as far as um, uh, strands <laughs> or beads will be this group right here. And 
that's what I'm going to do right now. So if you see, let me zoom in a bit. We are basically, in other words, filling in the gaps with the white beads. So each bead is going to go into the middle link between each feather link. So it's going to go into this link right here, that link right there, and then if you can see this link right there. So now we have all of the strands and beads connected to the bottom layer. So now I'm going to bring out the top layer. And connect the bottom layer or the bottom chain to the top chain at the connecting jump, jump rings. Okay, that we um, went over earlier in this tutorial. So I'm going to grab my pliers and I'm going to loosen the jump ring. And I'm going to connect the very last link onto the jump ring. Like that. And then I'm going to close off the jump ring. And I'm doing that to the other jump ring as well. The other end of the bottom strand. Okay. All right, y'all. So this is the final product. All right, this is the finish of this beautiful statement necklace. All right. So we have all of our pieces on. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful statement necklace. So this wraps up, y'all, the night in the woods of Bark and Beatbox. And let me know if you guys are excited to receive next month's Bark and Beatbox. All right, the month of November. What colors do you think is gonna be in the box, guys? I haven't seen blue eyes. This is my first year starting out with Bark and Beatbox. I'm only about a half of year in and I have not worked with blue yet. So I have a slight suspicion <laughs> that blue is coming up really, really soon, if not for the month of November. We'll see. All right, let's take a vote, y'all. Let me know in the comments below. Let me know what colors you think November is going to be about. Guys, it was absolutely a pleasure working on this beatbox this month, month of October, Night in the Woods. I did inform you guys that there will be a bonus all right during this tutorial at the end of this month which is this beautiful adjustable beaded ring <laughs> okay and this bead is the car the faceted carnelian bead from bark and beat box october edition all right so this is what we made this is the whole collection and this ring, I will do a tutorial on how I made this ring and how I made this ring and other adjustable or stretch beaded rings. 
guys if you have enjoyed this video this tutorial if it was inspirational to you if it was uh informative creative okay give me that thumbs up y'all thank you guys so much for your support and i also want to add to you um add on that i truly appreciate you guys um support for me opening my new etsy shop guys vibrant soul crafts thank you guys so much i appreciate the support and the encouragement that you guys have been giving appreciate it till next time guys bye